is not streaming, right? Yeah. Oh. Hi, hi everyone. This is Nadia uh, from Janat Missions, your host for today. So yeah, welcome to Saturday, uh, March 12th info session with the United International College for the Division of Culture and Creativity. So we are uh, also waiting for other students to join as well. So we might allow them like maybe one or two more minutes for them to get settled and then also to join this uh, event on Zoom and also on YouTube as well. And yeah, just want to let you know if you have any questions for UIC, uh, for the UIC professors or for the UIC admissions team, uh, let us know. You can always write your questions on the Q&A section. And then in the, in the end of this uh, info session, we will cover the topics together. We will cover your questions together and make sure you get all the answers you need so you can get started with the applications uh, for the UIC. So for today's event, um, maybe if you have joined the UIC's event before, you kind of know what's the format for but for those of you who just joined uh, the UIC's info session today, then this might be something new for you. So for the UIC info session, the format would be uh, usually, usually it will begin by the UIC admissions team sharing the admissions information for all of you to get started. So you know uh, how it works and you know what to apply. Uh, what to prepare for your application, you know, what the scholarships that the UIC offers and everything else. And then after that, then the professors from the Division of Culture and Creativity at UIC will share a little bit further about their program. So they'll let you know what you can expect if you're studying the programs at UIC. And if you have any questions for the professors or for the admissions teams, again, you can always write it on the Q&A section so we can cover the topics together. So yeah, uh, while waiting for the other students to join, you can also make sure that your audio is working correctly. So make sure you can hear me okay. So just let me know if everything is working okay. So then I will also introduce you the professors for today's uh, info session with the UIC. So for today's info session, the UIC is inviting four professors from the Division of Culture and Creativity. So we have Mr. Uh, Jung Chuan, the Assistant Professor of Media Arts and Design Program. And then we have Mr. Andrew Pitt, the Associate Professor of Cinema and TV Program. And then we have Dr. Puri Ang, the Program Director or Associate Professor of Cultural and Creativity and Management Program. And also we have Dr. Uh, Wang Si, the Assistant Professor of Cultural Creativity and Management. So yeah, let us know if you have any questions for uh, the professors or the admissions team. And let's get started with the event. We hope that the information shared by the admissions team of the UIC and also all the four professors today will be beneficial for you. And then you can also get prepared with your application for the media arts and design or maybe for TV and uh, cinema program or maybe for the cultural and creativity management program. So yeah, we hope uh, you enjoy the event and thank you so much for joining. Okay, thank you, Nadia. Hello everyone, I'm Jessica Xiao from International Development Office and this is my colleague, Jesse, also from International Development Office. Okay, let me share my screen first. Okay, I and Jesse will introduce something about uh, UIC. And our session will uh, consist of three parts, who we are, what to study, and the student experience, and scholarships and how to apply. 
Okay, now I will play a video from which you can get a general idea about what USC will be look like. Have you ever thought of your ideal university? Have you dreamt of being a liberal arts college student? It is a journey where you explore your intelligence, skills, and potential to become inspired, to think outside the box, as well as to express yourself, face the challenge, and work hard to achieve your goals. There's also a haven to carry out interdisciplinary studies in arts and science, to appreciate both Chinese and Western culture to develop, to innovate, and to excel. It is a forest that has many paths. It is a round table with different minds meet. It is inspirational, diverse, and integrated. In knowledge and in dates unto the whole person. This is your university life, your unique journey. At USC, create your own university life. Start here, go anywhere. Okay, USC is the first higher education institution jointly founded by a mainland university and a Hong Kong university, Baptist, uh, Beijing Normal University, Hong Kong Baptist University, and USC was founded in 2005. USC is located in the beautiful coastal city of Zhuhai in the Great Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Great Bay Area. Zhuhai was one of the first places where modern Chinese met Western culture. USC showed us the historical mission of advancing the internationalization of Chinese higher education and taking the lead in implementing liberal arts education in China. So now on the right hand side is our phase one campus. So you have just seen the promotion video. In the future, the phase one campus will focus on humanity and social sciences. And uh, on the left hand side is our phase two uh, campus. In the future, this two campus will uh, focus on um, science and technology and gra uh, graduate education. And USC's mission and the strategic positioning is to establish a liberal arts college rooted in excellence in undergraduate education and graduate programs that highlight our strengths. USC is located in Zhuhai, and Zhuhai is located in the Greater Bay Area. Zhuhai is adjacent to Hong Kong, Macau, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou. So you can reach to these big cities within one hour where has been trained. So graduates are expected to gain more opportunities to live and work in Hong Kong once the new initiatives are implemented. One of USC's features is international education. So our faculty members come from more than 30 countries and regions. So one third of our faculty members are from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. And one third of our faculty members from overseas. And one third of our faculty members from mainland China. And the composition of our students are also diversified. So most of our students are from mainland China. And also we have students from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. And also we have international students on campus. So after four years study, the students can get two certifications. 
One is graduation certification awarded by UIC and degree conferred by Hong Kong Baptist University. UIC now have four divisions, uh, which is business, division of business and management, division of science and technology, division of humanities and social sciences, and division of culture and creativity. And also we have five uh, centers like general education office, which provide free elective courses. And also we have whole person education office, English language center, Chinese language and culture center, and research centers and the laboratories. So for division of business and management, below are the majors we offered for division of uh, business and management. Accounting, Applied Economics, Finance, Management of Human Resources, Marketing Management, and Entrepreneurship and Innovation, e-Business Management and Information Systems. And here are the majors provided by Division of Science and Technology, Computer Science and Technology, and Database, Data Science, Applied Psychology, Food Science and Technology, Environmental Science, Statistics, Financial Mathematics, Applied Mathematics, and AI, Artificial Intelligence. And here are the majors provided by Division of Humanities and Social Sciences, Public Registration and Advertising, Media and Communication Studies, Globalization and Development. Chinese culture and global communication, English language and the literature studies, applied translations. So if you are interested in any of the majors in previous three divisions, you can uh, refer to the recorded video made by China Admission on China Admission's website. Today, we will focus on division of culture and creativity. And uh, today we will focus on media arts and design cinema and television, and also cultural creativity and management. And also in this division, we still have mu musical arts, animation and interactive media, and also tourism, hospitality, and event management. UIC now have signed exchange agreements and MOUs with more than 62 universities. They are from US, UK, South Korea, Canada, and etc. At USC, uh, students, including international students, they can study or change abroad for one semester during their four-year study. Okay, here's a promotion video about whole person education. So let's let's watch it. Whole person education experiential learning are courses, programs, and activities where students apply knowledge in action, overcome challenges, practice multiple skills and discover their potentials. Courses include experiential development, braving the outdoors, working in teams, and building confidence. Emotional intelligence, understanding oneself, empathizing with others, and coping with stress. Sports culture, shaping the body, respecting opponents, and embracing culture. Experiential arts, reviving traditions, mastering techniques, and being creative. Ontario service, widening perspectives, serving others, and contributing to the community. Environmental awareness, exploring nature, thinking global, and acting local. And adversity management facing challenges, enduring hardships, and performing under pressure. Courses are complemented by off-campus programs where students deepen their learning experience. Okay, that's whole person education. Actually, whole person education um, is to provide experiential learning courses, programs, and activities that foster students' development in teamwork, stamina, and persistence international skill, self-awareness, endurance, creativity, science of responsibility, and cultural awareness. In 2020, around 718 of our graduates were admitted to top 100 US-ranked universities. 
And in 2021, around 800 and 500 of our graduates were admitted to top 100 QS ranked universities. So now I will hand over to my colleague, Jesse, to introduce about scholarships and how to apply to study at UIC. Thank you. Yes, about the scholarship for international students, we also provide a full scholarship. It's about 100,000 RMB to those candidates who have um, good, very excellent performance in their academic. So um, if the student is not that excellent enough, they also can apply for 30% entrance scholarship as well. And also can get the government scholarship is worth um, 10,000 RMB per student. But um, all those uh, evaluation will based on um, first come first serve. So we will encourage students to submit the application as soon as possible. And in 2020 to 2021 academic year, around 2000 students in total were awarded a scholarship in different categories. We can see some pictures um, in the award ceremony. And for the re admission requirements, we can go through some regulars, uh, regulations on the website. Um, on, we all post those um, very detailed information on IDEO's uh, website. So you can go through uh, and follow the website we showed here and submit your um, application online or just email us directly. So we also have some specific re regulars for um, some countries. So um, students may um, ask us or book an one-on-one -on -one consultation with us for a further conversation where you want to know more about UIC and more admission requirements, just talk to us. About how to apply, um, we can see those lists um, what you should prepare and submit your application with um, is like um, graduate certification of high school um, is also required for the um, transcripts, official transcript from your home institution and recommendation letter, maybe a uh, two recommendation letter um, from your teachers or uh, just from the company uh, you have already took the um, internship as well. And especially for the personal statement, you can write something uh, about yourself and let us know why you have the motivation to submit your application in UIC and passport copy and language certification for those non-English uh, speaking country students. And also we will um, set the deadline of uh, 30 June every year for the application deadline because we need to prepare the um, JW202 form for you. So um, if you have any question, just email us. Yeah, we can see a video of uh, what do the international students think, think of UIC. UIC. really cool because there's a lot of opportunities to integrate me and like myself and other Chinese students along with the Chinese students to get to know each other, um, explore our differences together, but find common ground to integrate together. UIC is an educational center that gives students the chance to learn China and all its cultural aspects, including traditional music, traditional dances, history, and geological location travel and historic places. The environment of the city is really awesome that I really am happy here. I know the technology, all the classrooms, and the teachers are highly qualified. I really appreciate to be here and leading my study. When I think of you, I see, I just think about when I went back to the club there, and they had so many different organizations there to for us to get interested in every club we spoke to was so passionate about what they did. Um, whether it was the outdoor club or the fashion model club, everyone, everyone was really, really dedicated to their craft.
Yes, let's um, share some beautiful picture of UNC. You can see the beautiful screen on campus. Yeah, our learning resources center. And the students, international students will share the uh, room with our mainland Chinese students as well. And also the sport camp uh, complex. Uh, here is the Huaitong Sport Park near uh, UNC. And the canteen in UIC. Yeah. <laughs> so all those programs of um, DCC will um, be here, culture creative clusters. Yeah, here is our uh, WeChat code and uh, our email, our website. You can follow us uh, for more information. And all students welcome uh, anytime for any requests to us. Um, yeah, uh, let's welcome our um, teachers and professors today. And first of all, we, we can well let's welcome Mr. Chong, um, the assistant professor of media arts and design program. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, can I should I share my screen now? Yeah. Okay, uh, hi everyone from abroad and uh, it's nice to see uh, some of my colleagues from the DCC. Um, my name is Yiwan Chung. Uh, I am here to talk about the MAD program and some of the things that you might come to uh, learn if you decide to choose this path. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I was born in the U.S. and uh, went to um, Cornell University for painting and Carnegie Mellon for uh, interdisciplinary masters. And I've been teaching at UIC for the past two and a half years. Um, so I've seen um, the two, two, and two years of graduates, and it's been wonderful being able to teach all of them. Um, so, so, you know, a lot of you might be wondering what is MAD, uh, which is basically the uh, media arts and design, and a lot of people are wondering what does that mean, and it's basically we're here to kind of teach you all about art and design, um, also with an emphasis on emerging technologies, so a lot of students end up using everything from microcontrollers like Arduinos to 3D design that they can use to make uh, spaces for installations, exhibition design, uh, games, as well as traditional drawing and painting. Um, and so we like to think of ourselves as a sort of, again, an interdisciplinary program. Um, and so, you know, one thing that a lot of people ask is, is media arts and design uh, simply painting and drawing? And sort of what I hinted at uh, just before is that painting and drawing is a part of media arts and design, but there's also a whole area that it includes that's go that goes beyond painting and design. So like I mentioned already, 3D design, but also there's product design, uh, UI design, um, and basically, thinking about you know aesthetics thinking about how to uh, match colors how to create a product and brand design so all these things kind of combine together in terms of how we see the world from a visual perspective um, a little bit about the requirements of the program so there are um, a few major compulsory courses um, everything from introduction to uh, aesthetics introduction to electronic media communication design. There are a few design and drawing fundamentals. So the drawing fundamentals, you learn uh, in the first year, how basically how to draw, think about perspectives, um, how to draw from life to design fundamentals, where you learn about Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, there's history of art and design, photography, uh, interactive art and design and digital media. 
where students have a chance to work on the computer more uh, and 3D design fundamentals. And then this all culminates to a final year project uh, in the last year where students work with a single professor and help they the professor helps them uh, create their own project uh, in the first semester and then in the second semester they go on to um, you know actually doing their own project and um, they have the choice between a dissertation or a media project and if it's a media project they will present their work in an exhibition. Um, on top of the comp compulsory courses, there are a lot of elective courses. So these courses, the students actually can choose from, and they don't have to do all of them, but these are just some of them that you can choose from. And this allows you to kind of focus on uh, your individual interests, right? So there are an animation class, digital drawing, uh, additional painting, you know, more time-based media, uh, website design, computer game design, video arts, storytelling, sound design. So these are all like, you can think of these as more narrowly uh, specific focus with the same rigorous kind of studying. Um, and so you can pick and choose based on what your interests are. So this allows a lot of flexibility for uh, any of the MAD students. So, you know, I think one of the things that are a lot of, on a lot of uh, students' minds and potential student minds for applying to any sort of media arts and, and design program is sort of what are the internship and graduate uh, opportunities and career potentials. So, you know, a lot of our students uh, do do internships during the winter and summer um, holidays. And so, you know, People do internships with things such as design firms, galleries, different multimedia companies, such as running their social media account, uh, you know, um, exhibition design, event companies, art centers, uh, auction houses, and commercial art projects. Um, and a lot of them go to work with these different companies, and then they come back with sort of real world skills. And then they have to summarize their experiences and that you can actually um, get credit for these internship opportunities. A lot of our uh, MAD graduates, they end up getting a uh, master's. So you can kind of see that this was a poll done for the 2020 MAD cohort and over 63% kind of pursued a higher degree. So this means some sort of graduate program um, and they have gone to places such as Goldsmith, UCL, um, UCA and UK, Monash University, Singapore, NTU, US Savannah College of Art and Design, um, and so forth. So, um, and then most of the other people end up working for a company. So between 63 and 27%, you know, most people find a way to use these skills in some fashion. Um, the different kinds of study areas and skills that you might pick up. So communication, digital media, game, education, graphic design, museum studies, and animation. Um, and a good number of them, I know even now, if you talk to them, they do have a lot of interest in pursuing uh, mostly degrees and graduates for uh, um, graphic design, some sort of graphic design. So um, like I briefly mentioned, these are some of the career potentials. So, and you can, again, some of the skills you learn can help you become a visual artist. Uh, a lot of them also translates over to commercial designers, graphic design, UI design, game design, and animation. Um, so again, a lot of these skills overlap, right? And so when you learn how to draw and paint, those same skills can apply to the design fields. Um, Others kind of go into arts administration. So this means like grant, grant writing, uh, event planning, uh, creative art director, um, cultural creativity industry um, person. So all these different things, because you're embedded in the arts, it allows you to kind of be an intermediary between the two. And lastly, uh, uh, so, you know, sort of the economics part of it, right? So if you want to work at a design, big design company or auction house or advertising, um, there have been students who went on to work for Tencent um, and other companies and, and, you know, applied these same visual design skills. 
So, um, so, so just a brief uh, overview. We also launched a uh, arts and design minor in 2020. So, you know, you can also take classes and get a minor in it starting for starting with the class of 2020. Um, so you don't have to, uh, you know, get the full major of MAD if you don't want to, but you still would like to uh, take a large number of these classes. Um, and we do have a whole number of really wonderful facilities for students to do their creative work. So for instance, we do have a painting and drawing studio um, and students have access to it during most of the week. And there you can see a lot of the easels that are there and a lot of the uh, you know, uh, stands and models that the students can use to draw. And you can see there's a lot of natural light that enters the space to allow for these figure drawing sessions. We also have uh, two rooms of computers uh, filled with IMAX and Wacom drawing tablets. Um, these computers also have the Adobe Suite, Maya, uh, and other, other types of digital tools that students can use. Um, I believe we also have Unreal on there. And so, so you know, students are also have access to these rooms uh, five days a week um, and can use them, you know, as much as they want. So on the right, you can kind of see some sample work by students who've done, uh, you know, illustrations, uh, digital il illustrations. You know, and uh, on the right here, you also have another another sample of a product design. In this case, uh, you know, a box of chocolates with some faces. We also have a photography room, um, and this is fully stocked with, you know, a, a black screen background, uh, diffused lighting, um, a computer that that students can instantly upload their photos to. And you can see some of the work that students have done in the past with their photography. So on the one on the right, the student kind of set up an entire setup in that photo in that photography studio. Lastly, we also have a 3D printing and fabrication shop. So this shop has two 3D printers, a CNC router, a laser cutter. Uh, and also other 3D fabrication tools such as drills and uh, saws. So students can also create uh, their works, not only in a digital form, but in, in a physical way. And, you know, just to kind of show you a, a brief overview of different kind of products students have made, you know, students have done everything from book design, you know, uh, product design. I really like the uh, work on the right with this kind of yellow figure. This was actually a student was interested in creating a, um, a sticker for WeChat. WeChat sort of the Chinese um, uh, messaging app. And so the student actually was pondering how to create different emotions through a 3D character. And this character is actually created uh, in Maya and then rendered out and then animated. And they actually submitted it to the WeChat program to have it approved. So you can actually download these stickers. So this is sort of an example of a final year project that kind of actually manifested not only in the exhibition, but also in the real world within, you know, within WeChat. Uh, you know, additional product design, uh, this, this project on the right, this was a student who uh, used the um, uh, Instagram filter to kind of do facial recognition and then create different types of, you know, difficult uh, to describe emotions uh, through these, um, the, the, the video filters of Instagram. So, you know, eating disorder, uh, anxiety, and, and so forth. So how, how does one kind of represent these abstract feelings? Students have done both uh, traditional 2D animation. So this was hand this was hand drawn on a tablet. So it's digital, but it was a traditional animation. And then students have also done 3D animation. So this is a student who the center uh, picture is a, of a student who decided to do a um, post post apocalyptic future. What, what would that look like um, in, in in sort of China? And so thinking about like steampunk, combining things like Blade Runner uh, with a sort of uh, a future of, you know, 
far in the future of sci-fi. Students have done 3D, 3D um, renderings for exhibition design, uh, game art, uh, game design, both uh, digital and physical. So the one on the left is a digital game and the one on the right is actually a physical board game that someone made. And, you know, we also have things such as interactive installation. So, you know, this particular student, they created a, they use the Arduino to kind of create a, a device where you put your phone in and then it kind of tells you to calm down, kind of thinking about how a lot of people now have these anxieties with looking at the phone, right, in terms of work, social media. And so it was a really nice commentary on like putting your phone and sort of holding your hands to this object and calming down and it would actually light up different colors uh, based on on you know what it's sensing from you and then this is this was a kind of interactive uh, installation that a student did with lights and they created these jellyfish and you know lastly students do a lot of these time-based and video art uh, mediums using a variety of tools such as animation, uh, you know, with key framing and to actual actual um, uh, filming of videos. And, you know, we do have places for students to show the work. We have like an open studio. So this is a room that students can use to put on their own exhibitions. A lot of teachers also use this room to showcase their students' works at the end of the semester. Uh, we do have a, a project studio, which students can use. So, you know, students can come here, you know, do their in-progress works on these tables and store their works here as well. And, you know, and our faculty, they come from all over. Right now, our program director, Dr. Yuan Yuan, um, she specializes in new media studies and culture. She deals a lot with uh, dissertation stuff um, and students who are interested in writing for their final year project. Uh, we've got Andy Tam, uh, uh, an artist and critic from uh, Hong Kong. And uh, Janie, she specializes in uh, animation and communication. Um, we've got Dr. Oksana Krasiniska uh, from Canada, and she deals a lot with the game design and 3D work. And then there's me, where I also focus a lot on um, time-based media, drawing, painting, and uh, interactive installation. So there's, our faculty have a lot of different skill sets and a lot of different choices for students to kind of learn from. Uh, and then we also have three AIs, assistant instructors, uh, who also help with uh, the students and help with the teaching and also help stu guide students throughout their four years. Um, and students, you know, get a lot of different types of awards. We also have a lot of activities. So in the past, we've got Team Lab Asia uh, come in. I'm not sure if any of you have been to Team Lab, but they do these really wonderful installations, um, you know, multimedia with projections. And, you know, we've had different, the director of KUST uh, come in, different kinds of Russian artists. We've had workshops done by cartoonists, in this case, Wang Ching Chen and uh, you know, we do interesting photography workshops. In this case, we invited a photographer, Picasso Chang, to come give a workshop for our students. And then when possible, we do do field trips. Obviously, with this current climate of um, COVID, it can be sometimes difficult, but we were able to, even last year, fit in a field trip to the Guangzhou Triennial. Um, and in the past, we've gone to Oket, Shenzhen, and uh, Guyuan uh, Museum of Art in Zhuhai. Um, and so students have lots of opportunities to learn both inside and outside the classroom. Uh, field trips to Hong Kong and also outdoor field trips to Zhuhai. Uh, I know last year a professor took one of his classes to uh, photograph uh, an alligator farm. So there's lots of opportunities to kind of practice your skills in a lot of interesting and creative settings. And again, we also have lots of exhibitions. These are just some pictures from our exhibitions. Uh, and these exhibitions include not just the final year project, but throughout the year, there are constant exhibitions that are happening, both by students and faculty. Different awards students have gotten. 
you know, we've got awards from alumni. So this particular student, Bai Jian Zhou, won in a design competition uh, in 2020. Um, we've had different uh, professors also getting different, award, different awards. Um, you know, we got the 2020 National Youth Cup National Arts and Design Competition. Um, and then as recent as 2020, uh, we also had a group of our students win the uh, Tencent Youth Game Design Challenge. And this actually uh, came out of one of um, Dr. Krasiniska's classes for their for her uh, game design. And the students actually applied on their own and they won this international or this international Tencent game design contest. And they actually um, got a lot of press for this. And I think all of us were really proud of them for doing that. So, um, so that's kind of a quick overview of the program. Hopefully I didn't go over time too much. And um, if there's any other questions, you can shoot them in the chat or you could ask them directly at the end of this um, after everyone else have gone. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chang for your informative information. Next, let's welcome Mr. Andrew Pitt, Associate Professor of Cinema and Television. Mr. Pitt, please. Okay, uh, so this afternoon what I'll do is uh, simply give a very brief introduction of myself. We have a short video uh, which uh, goes through the CTV program. And then after that, I'll talk about the uh, curriculum and activities and things that our students do. Uh, so first of all, uh, my name is Andrew Pete. Uh, I'm a filmmaker from California. That's where I grew up and went through uh, all school, elementary school, high school, college, and all. Uh, I'm an associate professor here at UIC. I've been here for the past seven years, and I uh, earned my MFA, the Master of Fine Arts, from the USC Film School in Los Angeles. Uh, so that's basics on me. So right now, why don't we take a look at the CTV video? Hello, can we cue the video, please? Makers. On top of on the set experience, students gain skills in all aspects of filmmaking screenwriting, directing, cinematography, editing, and sound design. Our graduates have found employment in TV stations, film companies, web companies, and advertising firms. Okay. 
All right. Um, so that gives you a little bit of a feel for what we have here at CTV. Um, uh, as far as our curriculum goes, we have a rather rigorous study plan for students at CTV. Uh, the first year for all UIC students focuses on general study courses. Uh, then in your second year, you begin taking film courses such as screenwriting, cinematography, and editing. Um, then in the first semester of the third year, uh, that's the one that most students believe to be the most challenging uh, because you take both the sound recording and editing class along with the core directing course where you learn to work with actors to create believable performances. And this class is very rigorous because you must work with another student to complete the entire process of creating two short films. Everything from writing an original script, recruiting a team, rehearsing actors, uh, to shooting the film, editing it, doing the sound edit, design, and then the final uh, color grading and output. So uh, at the end of the semester, we have a very big uh, film showing for all the students, and that lasts all day long. Uh, the second semester of the third year is mostly elective courses, uh, you can take various film history courses, uh, genre classes, for example, uh, Hong Kong film uh, or Taiwan film, they, these sorts of things. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, advanced directing and advanced sound, uh, virtual reality class, a TV production, experimental film, et cetera. So there's, there's, a, there's a variety of elective courses you can take. Now, the senior year allows for most uh, for more elective classes, but is largely focused on the completion of a final year project. And so in CTV, there are three possible tracks for completing the final year project. Uh, first is a, uh, you could do a research project where the student can research some aspect of media or social media, that sort of thing. Uh, the second is you could write a feature length script. Um, and then the third choice, uh, which is what most students do, is shooting and completing a film. Now, you can, in the film, you can choose between a narrative film, uh, which would be 10 to 15 minutes long, or a documentary, which is 15 to 30 minutes long. Um, and so, uh, again, that's the entire process. You have to get together your own team, to find actors, if it's going to be a narrative. Um, and of course, your, your team that's going to be the uh, lighting, your camera crew, your uh, sound. And then after you finish shooting, you have to do, you know, you get uh, maybe an editor to help with the editing and then sound, uh, uh, sound editing design and uh, color grading and all that. So it, it's a very involved process for the final year project. Um, so that's basically CTV. Uh, as far as uh, activities for students, I won't bother talking about general student campus life activities because you can get that information from the website. Uh, instead, I'll just restrict my comments to specifically CTV student activities. So we have uh, regular film showings. Uh, usually it's a very eclectic mix of international films chosen by our Italian professor Vincenzo. Uh, then the big event of the year is the what we call the 24 frames and CMF. 24 Frames is a platform to showcase the CTV students' graduation works, you know, the short film scripts and research papers. Um, this normally runs over about five evenings in the month of May. Uh, CMF stands for the Creative Media Festival, and that collects students' creative media works from different universities and areas, which include Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. Uh, it, and we invite industry experts to review and present awards. Uh, and in the past, uh, this has been produced with a huge theatrical stage show, which includes uh, music, dance, and uh, other performances in the spirit of a major gala event. Uh, because of COVID, we've had to curtail some of that, but we still have uh, uh, an event. It just become smaller because we can't get so involved uh, from different areas. Um, for our equipment, uh, as you saw in the video, uh, we have 
uh, a great deal and variety of equipment. Three years ago, we moved from our old campus to this new campus. So all of our facilities are new and much of our equipment is state of the art. Now you'll have seen some of that in the video and we have a, a full size sound stage. We have a, a sound mixing studio, a stage area. We have a TV production studio, uh, lots of cameras, lenses, lighting, sound kits for students to make their films. Uh, we have a large uh, a room that's just full of computers for editing. Um, and another nice feature is that we have a, a rather diverse campus, as you saw from the video. We have a green forested hill. We have a small lake with bridges. And so there are actually many areas for students to shoot their film projects either on campus or, or nearby the campus. Uh, for those who want to do ocean scenes, we always have students who want to have scenes that are on the beach or by the ocean and Drew High is right on the ocean. So it's easy enough to, to get out to do, you know, a variety of location shots. Um, for our uh, staff, uh, as the name of our school implies, we're a joint venture with the Hong Kong Baptist University. So as a result, we have a significant number of Hong Kong staff. However, uh, compared with other departments at UIC, we probably have more international teachers. Uh, CTV is not a particularly large program. We average around 80 students per year. Uh, our dean, uh, Jiang Wei, is a local Chinese. The program director is from Hong Kong and with a lot of uh, strong ties to Taiwan and Canada. And then we have professors from uh, Argentina, Italy, Canada, Hong Kong, and I'm from the USA. So it's a, it's a pretty good international mix. As far as our, our teaching assistants, the TAs, uh, whereas in the past we've had uh, international TAs, now because of COVID, uh, all of our TAs are from mainland China. All of them hold uh, master's degrees in some related field of media, and we all communicate in English. Uh, for our students, uh, we strongly encourage students to take on internships, uh, and most students do. Uh, I think something like 90% or so of our students do internships during the summer of their third year. Uh, and we find them inter internships that are directly related with cinema and television. Uh, we do, we're fortunate that we have a lot of contacts with various companies around China, not just here in Guangdong province, but up in uh, Shanghai and Beijing and other locations. Our students go to uh, television stations, uh, media companies, film companies, uh, and most of them uh, come back with very positive reviews. They learn a lot, they get contacts within the industry, and so many of them end up going on to jobs uh, related to those companies that they do internships with. Uh, uh, for our students, after they graduate, uh, over 50% of them go on to postgraduate programs uh, mostly in the UK and the US. Uh, some go to Canada, Australia, even New Zealand. Um, and then if they don't go on to postgraduate study, most of them uh, just uh, go into the industry and begin working in cinema and television. Um, so for if you'd like to have examples, because of course, uh, whereas the MAD program, you can show you photos of student works uh, films are longer, and so I'm not going to sit here and show a bunch of films that last 10, 15 minutes each. Uh, however, you can go to the, uh, to the UIC website, come to the CTV page, to our section, and we do have uh, a number of examples of student films. So there's, there's a whole bunch of student films, and you can watch the entire film uh, right from the website. Okay. So that's my presentation for today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pitt. <laughs> and now let's welcome Dr. Piri Ng, Program Director, Associate Professor, and Dr. Wang Xi, Assistant Professor of Culture and Creativity Management to give a brief introduction of CCM. Let's welcome. Okay, 
Thank you. Good afternoon, dear colleagues and international students. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so uh, I would like to uh, mention one key points. Okay, actually our uh, program culture, creativity and management is a BBA on the degree, which is a, a very unique program offering a business management courses combined with uh, some applicable design, exhibition design, and also with a uh, culture, uh, uh, tourism and also uh, and event planning. So this is a very unique program uh, offering in both Hong Kong and the Great Bay area and using English as the major teaching media. So uh, first of all, uh, our um, I, uh, our colleagues, uh, Dr. Wang Xi and I will answer your questions at the end. And then if you want to know more details, you can refer to our CCM website. So uh, right now I would like to ask IDO uh, colleagues to show a video so then you can have an overall uh, review about uh, what's our program. Okay, thank you, Jesse. Sorry, maybe we can't um, yeah. see the video. I haven't shared the screen. Which is major in business management, event and hospitality, as well as the trend management. In order to fit into the skills and the prospects of cultural industries management in China. Jesse, yes. hello. Yeah, we can't see the video. Um, yeah, maybe you need to switch the screen. Sorry. Lifelong learning is very important for the local people. Besides theories, students need to learn practical. Sorry for my mistake. Um, How about now? Um, uh, no. 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 Uh, no. Uh, you have to open the video first and then share. <laughs> yeah. Or can I try to share? I'm not sure whether I can do it. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. I think it works. Yeah. Huh? I hope it. It works. Yeah, it works now. Yeah. Oh. Your screen, my screen. <laughs> 随着文化产业在国民经济中的发展及提升，文化产业从业者的角色变得愈发重要。文化创意与管理人可以参与各文化创意机构的管理工作。范围包括平面设计、演绎创作等各个领域。CCM is a forward-looking program which is major in business management, event and hospitality, as well as design management. In order to fit into the skills and the prospects of cultural industries management in China, we practice professional courses in the same way, we also expand our knowledge and understanding. Lifelong learning is very important in the local and global world. Besides theories, CCM students need to learn practical applications such as business plans, videos, posters, or presentation models for the future career or graduate study. Every year, they will hold an event to showcase students' work and Hi, I'm 
and Becky, a year six student from Cultural Creativity and Management. This is the exhibition held by our program. Duality is the actual idea of this exhibition, and which also fit the spirit of Cultural Creativity and Management. Besides, we adopt all of our style, aim to perfectly combine the color black and white, blue and orange together, and also the business and creativity, the past and future. We carefully use our knowledge, design, and create creativity, to constantly improve ourselves, to make our future learning and career development a basis. After graduation, CSM students usually further the study in Hong Kong, United Kingdom, United States, France, Canada, Australia. Hello, my name is Christine. I graduated from CCM program in 2016, and now I study cultural management at Chinese University of Hong Kong. 我是 Kelly 江静妍，我是呃、uh, UIC CCM 一一届的毕业生。从 UIC 毕业之后呢，我去了法国格勒洛布尔高等商学院。学习时尚设计、奢侈品管理。I'm a CCM graduate from 2015, and now I've been graduate for two years. After I graduated from UIC, I came to UK for further study. Um, I went to University of the Arts London, St Joseph and Martin College of Arts and Design. The CCM graduates have many opportunities to work in multinational companies, government, and private companies in the areas of cultural management. Advertising, marketing, event planning and management, hospitality, and exhibitions. So, welcome to CCM. 在这里，理论与实践的紧密结合，使我们在多元化的文化领域有了更多的可能。So uh, uh, we hand over the time to Jesse and IDEO staff. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ng, for sharing the video. Okay, so now, Nadia, let's ask the students whether they have any questions to our professors. We can now hear you, Nadia. Sorry, apparently I mute myself. Okay. Yeah, so let's go for the Q&A uh, session. So students, do you have any questions? If you do have any questions, uh, let us know. So we can, then, uh, we can then cover a lot of your questions and so we can clear your doubts for today. And then I think for now, what I want to uh, ask is also for the professors, Especially because like for creativity programs, uh, for these type of programs, often students will need to, um, they might need to submit their portfolio or, you know, to show their artwork or to show that they have a deep uh, interest in the creativity industry. So like um, maybe just a little brief uh, insights on what type of students uh, that you are looking for to join your program. So okay, that's any professors yeah. have ideas mm -hmm. on that? Uh, okay. Um, for CTV, what, what happens is, is, again, the students aren't immediately uh, entered into CTV as a major on arrival. Um, the, that is uh, apportioned uh, during the first year, like application is made. And then we will uh, look at the uh, students, uh, you can you can have like a short film or uh, a uh, what we call a photo essay or photo story, uh, and so we're we're looking at is you know students who are interested in telling a story and communicating visually, um, uh, which is much more important than you know writing an essay. Uh, because CTV, cinema and television, 
these are visual arts. And so we want to have uh, students who have some sense, some idea of what a story is, uh, you know, has a beginning, middle, end, has some kind of a character uh, who's doing something uh, and how to portray that story in a visual environment. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. uh, I'll say um, MAD is similar to, uh, you know, what CTV uh, and Andrew Pete said. Um, but I think the thing that should be reiterated is that all students come not choosing a major, right? So you would apply to UIC first uh, and you have a chance to kind of talk with different professors beforehand and also uh, older students, you know, of later years who are in the programs already and you have a chance to kind of decide what you want. Uh, so I would say this is not something necessarily you have to worry about at this stage, but, you know, after the first semester, you do then select your program and you write a sort of paragraph about why you want to join the program. And at least for MAD, there is a portfolio, but we do kind of treat everyone at the same level. So, you know, you do have to take uh, f foundational drawing, uh, you know, learn different digital tools and techniques such as the Adobe Suite. So um, there isn't this expectation that you need to have had specific uh, artistic training because that's what you're here to learn at UAC. Right. Thanks, Mr. Chung, and thanks, Mr. Pete, for the answers. Uh, Dr. Puri, do you have any comments on that? Yes. Uh, for CCM program, basically, uh, the students will first enter uh, uh, BA, uh, uh, B BBA broad based group first. I think uh, Dr. Uh, my colleagues, Dr. Wang Xi will explain it uh, during the first semester of year one. And then basically according to the past record, we can admit both arts and science students because all our courses, a combination of both uh, business uh, management with uh, involving finance, accounting, and also with uh, some uh, um, cultural study as theory, we don't require the student to submit portfolio. Uh, so, um, Actually, I think the school and IDO and also our admission office will set up some uh, uh, mark range uh, and also look at the high school records uh, mm -hmm. of the students. I think there are certain criteria they may set up and then uh, they will um, uh, admit the student according uh, to the uh, system uh, after they finalize uh, the, the assessment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, I think the student, once they interest, they can apply and then they can refer to the requirements yeah and then maybe my colleagues can explain a little bit about the broad-based system yeah uh, okay yeah uh, thank you dr Puri. yeah so yeah maybe at the first semester at the very beginning yeah we did uh, also cover and also the fulfill some requirement for the business administration right we call it the bba Business administration. So yeah, maybe there are more courses related to the business, related to the management, and also related to something related in the business field. Yeah. So and we call the cultural creativity management. So in this situation, we provide more courses related to the cultural creativity. This domain, right, this field of the study. So we also just provide you the general business um, examples, and also yeah, we uh, provide more courses and also knowledge related to the cultural creativity industries. So that's the difference between our program to the general business programs. And besides that, we also uh, we don't, uh, as Dr. Puri mentioned, we, we don't require the very strong uh, skills and abilities in the design, in, uh, like uh, doing some portfolios. Yeah, we uh, talk about more on the management. And besides, we still yeah, can uh, give you some knowledge, uh, skills, experience on the um, that kind of the techniques, such as uh, 3D design and also the artwork design like that. But yeah, not very... Um, uh, uh, require the very strong ability on it, right? Good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wang and Dr. Puri for the comments. So students, any more questions for the UIC? And maybe uh, one more question for me again, because uh, I know with all the pandemic that is going on and the COVID-19, a lot of the students who are overseas, they're worried about um, the border being closed and everything. 
And due to the fact that border is still closed now, so mm-hmm. a lot of universities are only able to do online classes. So I think there is the doubt in uh, how the online classes would be, especially for certain programs where, you know, I think students would expect some uh, more in-hand experience, or maybe they would expect that, you know, they have a direct interaction with the professors and all. So especially for creativity programs where I think the expectations of having a direct conversation with the professors are there. Uh, What's kind of the strategy for the uh, online classes itself? So how to ensure that students can still have a smooth learning process if let's say the border is still closed and they are having an online classes uh, later in the fall intake. Sure, Mr. Feet, I will free to answer. Oh, um, well, I'm, I, I can't be really certain about that because I mean, I, I mostly teach uh, film production. Uh, so I teach the directing class, advanced sound, advanced directing. Uh, so these are all very much hands-on mm-hmm. classes. Uh, so all of my, I mean, uh, for us, uh, it's all in-person classes. So we haven't uh, really had any online classes. Uh, the, we, we did have a brief period for right when the pandemic began. Um, we had some online work and so we were able to uh, do some of that by um, you know students when they were in their homes in their home cities Mm -hmm. they just uh, made films with their friends Um, and uh, 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 yeah I mean I only did the online classes for a short time so we're not engaged in online classes right now. So I, I don't know if the other teachers are doing online classes at the moment. Others? Yeah, I would, I would say so similar to Andrew Pete. Oh, you wanna go, Piri? Oh, no, you start the first slide, I let you go. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I think most of the, like Andrew Pete said, um, most of the online classes only happen in the beginning semester. So I, I, I don't think it's really, uh, it's hard for any of us to really say how it's it's designed because that was only for that moment when everyone had to. Uh, for the most part, uh, most of the students have been on campus, right? And and so I, I don't think it's, um, it's, it's easy for us to answer that. I can say there, are, it, I would definitely say to be realistic, it probably would be difficult for a lot of hands-on classes. Uh, I know in MAD, there was one student who for one semester still couldn't return as an international student and currently uh, has has uh, temporarily suspended her time because it, it was just too hard for her, right? So even with accommodations, it was definitely difficult for, for the hands-on classes. So, so there's something to consider. Uh, I don't think any of us can foresee the future, right? And so we do the best that we can, um, but just something to think about, yeah. Or, or maybe uh, for CCM, actually, uh, during the second semester, uh, I think uh, the school, uh, this, uh, we have a department center for teaching and learning, and also uh, some of the senior men management start talking about and promoting uh, blended learning. Uh, we, we try, uh, our best because uh, a part of our courses are theory based, maybe it's easier. We try to have some uh, face-to-face uh, uh, teaching with the uh, with the student in campus and also re- uh, record some videos and put it uh, in a platform we call, uh, in UIC we are using iSpace. Uh, in this platform, we can upload all the updates information, the course syllabus, course content, uh, videos, assessment. So uh, to a certain extent, uh, this is some method uh, we, we try to sort out um, uh, the, uh, the way how to, how to follow the uh, tutorial. And also uh, right now we are using uh, other uh, online meetings uh, because sometimes some students, uh, even in China may not uh, come, in, uh, come back in time due to the quarantine issue. We try to use Tencent meeting 
and then the quality is quite good. We can communicate uh, together. In this is a sort of alternative method. Of course, uh, we would we would greatly appreciate uh, if the overseas students can uh, travel to China to experience uh, the cultural environment here and then enjoy the study here. And also, I I would like to, uh, to ask my colleagues. Uh, to uh, supplement some information. Yeah, thank you, yeah, Doctor. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Uh, so, as yeah, Doctor Wu mentioned about, uh, we have the experience, yeah, in kind of on those kind of the online courses, yeah, due to some kind of the policies and the quarantine kind of the issues for the international student or the Chinese student. Yeah, we have kind of technologies like, uh, uh, like the maybe the class system. Yeah, we call it the iSpace. Yeah, maybe your study a board. Yeah, you use a blackboard or the canvas. Yeah, I think that those are the same kind of the system. Yeah, we upload the materials and the slides and you can download it. And also at the same time, yeah, we can do the online class like this, use a Zoom, use a Tensor meeting, yeah. So yeah, maybe at the at beginning of uh, each semester, yeah, some of the students or uh, in the current period, yeah, we provide this kind of the online courses and uh, they also can join uh, the uh, live classes, right? And also interact with the students, with the classmates, and also ask the questions. I think yeah, the, the reality is good, right? the, the quality is also good. So those are kind of the things we provided to support our online courses, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, so thanks uh, everybody for all the answers. So yeah, we are reaching the end of our event. So I mean, it's a big concern for international students uh, for not being able to come to China yet. So we are hoping that uh, Chinese government uh, will probably open the border in the near future so they can also come and uh, come back and also study in China. So before we close our uh, session for today, do you have any closing statement, maybe uh, anything you'd like to say to all the audiences who are here on Zoom and also the ones who are on YouTube and maybe for the ones who will watch the recording of these events later on YouTube? Welcome to UIC. <laughs> <laughs> And if you have any questions, you can email us at international at usc.edu.cn. And we still have some scholarships like a full scholarship and also 30% scholarships. So don't hesitate to apply now. Welcome you at UIC. Mm -hmm. And also, if you want to have our extra information, uh, please send uh, a message to, uh, to IDO and then we can provide more. Yeah or refer to our uh, CCM website and also all the program website. Uh, you are greatly welcome. Great, uh, anything, anybody else want to add something? Right, so it looks like everything's good. So thank you so much, Mr. Pete. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jung. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Thank you, Dr. Burry. And thank you, Jesse and Jessica for today's uh, info session. We hope it's helpful for everybody. And yeah, welcome to UIC. See you guys at UIC. Bye. Thank, thank you, Lydia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the work. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.